Jennifer Crumbly, mother of school shooter Ethan Crumbly, takes the stand in her defense. What do we make of it? Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman. People are understandably outraged about school shootings because you can only prosecute the school shooter only once, and yet you have parents who have raised a school shooter, or raised someone who has committed these demonic acts, never held accountable. Well, a prosecutor in Oxford, Michigan, decided to do something about it. And in an innovative way, she is prosecuting the parents of Ethan Crumbly for involuntary manslaughter. That's when you act so recklessly, so negligently that your kid becomes a school shooter and you are responsible for it. Not that you intended him to do it, not that you even knew he would shoot up the school, but by your actions and inactions, you created this risk that was foreseeable that something tragic would happen. And that's what this case is about. And Jennifer Crumbly, the mother of Ethan Crumbly, took the stand in her own defense. So let's discuss how she did and what I think is going to happen. Jennifer Crumbly was unemotional compared to how she was at the defense table for much of the trial. When she was there watching others on the stand, she was tearing up. She was a lot more emotional than she was when she got the stand herself. Then her answers were pretty direct. Um, and to me, it looked like she was rehearsed. She had a lot of practice, in my mind, with her lawyer to go over the questions that were going to be asked of her in direct examination. But that's different then when it comes to cross-examination. That's where the money is made. That's for all the marbles. And under a withering cross-examination, you saw some uh, signs of vulnerability, and uh, I think she made some mistakes. For one, she, asked, she was asked if there was anything she can do differently. And then she answered in this way. Do you believe there were things you were thinking at the time, I should do this, but I'm not doing it? Do you look back and think that? No, I don't. I mean, I of course I look back after this all happened, and um, I've asked myself if I would have done anything differently, and I wouldn't have. Not a good answer. When you're in front of a jury of your peers and a courtroom full of grieving families who lost their loved ones, four innocents who were murdered by this woman's son, you're saying that if you could do it all over again, you wouldn't do anything differently? That's hard to take. And it's also hard to believe. I know that she was thinking that, well, if I say that I would do something differently, it hurts my case. I'd be found guilty. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you could have said, yeah, there are a couple things here and there. I, and obviously, I, I wish I had done that. I, 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 I wish that, you know, I had done X and you can still say that you've done other things that would have prevented this from happening or you didn't know, but, you know, at least show that you admitted to making some mistakes because otherwise you just don't look real. And I think she may have lost some jurors there. Now, the problem for the prosecutors is that you've got to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. You've got to have a unanimous jury and all it takes is one juror to buy the defense lawyer's arguments that are we really going to create a standard where parents are going to be liable for the actions of their children? And so these horrific actions that this mother was involved in her children's life. They called her a helicopter mom. Uh, she said that she was hypervigilant in her son's life. And of course, nothing could be further than the truth. Just look at her son's own diaries, uh, which were produced and shows that the son was seeking help and, her, and his parents were ignoring him. And it wasn't just that they ignored his clear mental issues, you know, the, the fact that he was torturing you know, birds or that he was uh, saying there were demons in the house. Uh, the parents ignored that. They didn't seek, seek help. Instead, what did they do? They bought him a gun. Who does that? Their 15-year-old child, who clearly has mental health issues, instead of getting him therapy, they bought him a gun, and it was the mother who took him to the range to teach him how to shoot properly. And then, later on, while he was in school, he was caught by a teacher looking up ammunition on his phone. And when the parents were called about it, the parents ignored the, call, the calls from the school. They ignored it. They didn't respond. And then later, the mother texted her son, LOL, I'm not mad at you. Just don't get caught. So when you say that, 
Perhaps in this case, it's a little different than just the run-of-the-mill case where a parent is going to be held accountable for the actions of their children. Well, in this case, you have an egregious set of facts. How about the next day, uh, shortly thereafter, the student, Ethan, was in school making these really disturbing drawings, making these horrific drawings of shooting up the school. Of uh, It said, blood everywhere. That's what he wrote. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. So the teacher did what teachers are supposed to do. She saw something, she said something, and Ethan Crumbly was sent to the principal's office. The parents were called, and the parents showed up this time. But did the parents tell the school administration that they had bought Ethan Crumbly a gun? No. Did they ask to search Ethan Crumbly's book bag? No. Did they agree to take him home? No. The parents said they could not take him home that day. They left him in school, didn't mention that he had access to a gun, didn't check his book bag, and then Ethan Crumbly returned to class and shot up the school, four kids dead. Now people are saying, including the defense, that well, the, the school could have acted. And if it wasn't enough for the school to ask to check the book bag, then how about the parents? The school officials aren't being charged with anything, at least not criminally. They're being sued civilly. But the difference here between civil liability and criminal liability is the knowledge of the gun. See, the parents knew that Ethan Crumbly had access to a gun. They bought him the gun. But the school administration didn't. They were never told of that. And although the school administration clearly, to me, acted badly here, they acted, uh, they were neglectful in their duties, it's not the same as the mother who had knowledge that her son had access to a access to a gun, who took him to the gun range to teach him to shoot, who knew he was looking up ammunition, LOL'd him, and then refused to take him home, refused to check his book bag. And then after, just so you know, talk about consciousness of guilt, afterwards, when the son, Ethan, was arrested for the crimes, what did the parents do? Did they go try to help him? No. They left him in a jail, sitting alone, while they took off. And they hid. That's consciousness of guilt. And then later, just as an aside, when they uh, got arrested themselves, they hired a lawyer to defend themselves, a private lawyer, but not for their son. They uh, left their son with a public defender. Not exactly parents of the year. So the father is going to be tried next. This is the trial of the mother. The father actually will have a little bit of an advantage because his trial will be later. He gets to watch the prosecution's case. It's like a dry run for him. But the mother to me, is more culpable than the father because she's the one who taught him how to shoot. She's the one who LOL'd the son after the son was looking for ammunition. And so I think that uh, this prosecution has a decent case here. Also, keep in mind that from jail calls, while they were in jail, the mother was on the phone with her father asking about how many calories were in the bologna sandwiches that she's eating and uh, asking about all this other stuff but not asking about her son. So, I think that for the sake of accountability, for the sake of doing something about these mass shootings once and for all, setting the right precedent that I would find her guilty. But it's up to the jury, and the jury could be swayed by the arguments from her counsel that this was not foreseeable, that she didn't read Ethan Crumbly's diaries. True. She had her head in the sand, apparently, and... It was the father who was the one who bought the gun. It was the father who was supposed to store the gun. So she's pointing the finger at her husband. And if you've got members of the jury who say, look, I don't want to be in that position where I have a wayward child and I'm going to be sentenced to prison because of his actions, you know, that could resonate. I think there could be a hung jury here. I would be surprised if it was an acquittal, but we'll see soon enough. I think there's enough for a prosecution, for a conviction, but uh, juries are only predictable in one way, being unpredictable. So we shall see. So that's my synopsis of the latest in the case of Jennifer Crumbly. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman, and I'll see you next time.